Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Tuesday, arguably the chewiest Tuesday of all Tuesdays because today we're choosing the new president and Jackson Clotter here to break it all down for you. Steve Kozniacki edition. What's so, that guy's name? Steve Wozniak. Like so similar. Like, yes, that's his name. Steve Cornicelli, like Steve Alex Cornicelli's glasses. brother. Steve Trousers and Glasses, yeah. Steve Glass, George Glass. <laughs> His name is Steve Glass. So yes, we have sort of done away with the Fast Five. This is going to be an election day special where we're going to break down everything that's happening county by county, vote by vote. In the swing runoff. state by swing state. Swing state by swing state. I think that's everything what everybody you wants. thought you knew about the toast. Put it out of your mind. Today, like we are breaking down kind of the biggest and baddest things going on in the country. And that in is. The country. That's Trump Vance vs. Harris Walls. Let me tell you, these like uh, these duo names don't roll off the tongue. Like well, the they're kind of just chewy. Said it, it was chewy because you threw in a VS. Okay, tr no, but like Trump Vance versus yeah, the versus is tripping. Yeah. Okay, Trump, Trump Vance, Vance Harris Walls. Like they both just like they're chewy. Do you know what I mean? Harris Walls is mm, it's, it's okay. like a lot of R's and W's, and then Trump Vance is very consonant heavy. Like yeah. con consonant. What about? Trump walls, Harris Vance. I think honestly just like sounds the better. Way I'm saying it, and the way you're saying it, like you're making a meal of it. So obviously, we will not be doing that today because we actually value our careers, and mm -hmm. so we're just here to get you through the day. And honestly, congratulate. I was thinking about that on the way over here. Like it's been a long election season. I feel like it really like amped up in January. Like we have been doing this for a long time. We have made it through. Like let the chips fall where they may. Like we're at like. We're at the inflection point. Like, we made it. It's almost over. That's me. And congrats. Congrats, like, for making it through. It's a tough time election season. People become really insufferable, especially if you work, like, in the public sphere. Like, best of luck to you. Um, and we made it through. And honestly, like, I'm proud. Yeah. And we're going to have a chili to celebrate. Yes, I'm defrosting meat as we speak. I said, Ben, get on it. Ben's golfing. So I um, am forced to make the chili today. No. So we're screwed. We're screwed. Yeah. Claudia, you we, deserve better. We are screwed. Well, Ben's like, I can start the chili when I get home at like four. He should have started it before he headed out for the day. Put it in the crock and let it sit. Yeah, so it'll be an adventure. Turdy's, you know, Turdy's cooking adventures. They're always, you know, fun and exciting. So we'll just see where it takes us. I had wanted to start mine before the toast today, but I just ran out of time. But it's okay. I'll still be, if I start right after the toast and then put it in the crock, like we'll be on time for dinner time. But it would have been nice to have that behind me. So something major happened to me yesterday. I haven't really spoken about this um, like publicly in a while. Um, I speak about it in my personal life all the time. But as you guys know, around you know Q1 of this year, I decided to be a woman of my word, which is what we were talking oh, about right. yesterday, how important it is. And I decided to you know set up an encampment outside of Bloomingdale's. I'm one of their biggest customers in their oh, restaurant. That's not what I, I thought, there. because what I thought you were going to say, which is, by the way, like you missed 10 months sober. I must... Yeah, I know, because I like lied when it was nine. And I, I know, but like done. now it was the time to do it, November 1st. Yeah, but I had already done it. I posted in feed. I couldn't post twice. Oh, I thought you, I thought you deleted it. No, no, no. I thought no, that's no. what I just, you like, were saying, because that's what you started in January that you said you were going to do, and you did it. No, what I started in Q1 is that, like I said, I would not be supporting this restaurant any longer because I, I'm just like tired of eating, you know, food that isn't good. And so I have, st I have literally not eaten there once, not once since I said I'm such a woman of my word. But Shannon was in town yesterday. And we wanted like a light, swirly lunch. You just to like see the, the sights, and it was like really just what we needed. We wanted like sodas and salads and wraps. Like we just, so I went and let me say I crossed the picket line. So I'm a scab. I'm a scab. We already knew that though. Yeah, I'm a big time scab. And it was so good. Like, you know why I don't it know, was good? I don't know if they were having a good day. Like I happened to just catch them on a good day because that happens. Or like they, like that was my impact. No, you needed some distance. Absence makes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Like when you're eating it every single day, like you become accustomed to the no. taste and like you become more in the weeds as opposed to like having it fresh. You no. like miss the whole experience. No, 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 no. Like trust me. Like I know when my wraps like aren't made with love and like yesterday's wrap was made with love and I always like request extra toasted and they never toast it. But like this time it was like there was tangible differences. And I, I really I, I'm not I'm not saying it's my impact because it could have just been an off day like and I go back in a couple of days and it's yeah. back to burn. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it was a good day. Plus absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I think if you continue if you were like, oh, they got their shit together, I'm going to go back every day. 
you would get to the same place that you were at. No, that's like actually so like offensive and belittling of you. Like, cause then that's just like assuming that my encampment only began because I got sick of the place. Not no. like there was an actual flaw in the restaurant. No, no, that's not what I said. Yes, yes. Cause you're like, well, there you is, know, I just you eat said too there much. is a flaw in the restaurant that it's on and off all the time. So you had an on day. No, no, you're not understanding. Okay. You're not understanding. It was made with love. I'm glad for you. It was really good. And I was like, didn't want to be embarrassed in front of Shannon, like taking her to a restaurant that's full of crap. Like, I think she enjoyed it. We had ice cream. We had wraps. We like gossiped for like three hours. And mm, then she was Three leaving. hours of gossip. I feel like when you debriefed me, I didn't get like three hours worth. I feel yeah, like I was feeling tired. you're hiding from me. And <laughs> well, Ben is keeping you from me. She um, also, like she was at my house right before she went to the airport. So she was coordinating like her Uber to pick, come pick her up. And like, literally she was being like, kind of like, I mean, I'm like an airport Nazi. Like, I'm always like super early. She was just being like very relaxed about it. And her flight was out of LaGuardia, which is like closest to the city. So I was like, all right, I get it. I mean, she had a check bag. She was just being like a little loose, like a little free willy nilly. And she's calling herself an Uber and she realizes her flight is actually out of JFK, which is like double the time away. And she's certainly not going to make it. So much drama. She ended up getting on a flight out of LaGuardia. Like, she's okay, but like kind of chaotic day in my house. Wow. Yeah, drama. It follows me everywhere. Yeah. Drama. Like, these people are obsessed with me. I feel like you don't have, like, a dramatic life. I work hard to make sure that it's not. And I also don't... So that it's ordinary instead of violent? Exactly. And I don't court drama. Like, some people could... Something could happen to me and, like, I could make it a dramatic moment. But I don't because that's not how I... The level that I want to live my life at. Do you think that that's something I do? I actually wasn't thinking of you. But, like, some... I feel like something could happen and, like, people assume, like, the worst intent or someone are like, I'm gonna take it to your manager. And I'm just like... Let the chips fall where they may. I have to tell you, I did not hear one word you just said. Like, sometimes people are like, the girls talk so fast. I don't know what they're saying. And I'm like, you guys can't relate. I actually did not hear one word about an entire sentence that you just said. Which, which last you said sometimes, thing you heard? Sometimes things will happen in your life. Yeah, no, no, I, was, ah. I was rambling. That was a No, ramble. but like, even after the ramble, I did sometimes not hear. Sometimes things will happen and like, you're like, this is wrong. I'm going to take it to the manager. Like, ah. When something yeah. like doesn't go my way, I'm just like, okay. And so it Got didn't it. go my way. And I maintain yeah, I, my calm. I guess we're different in that sense because I'm a justice seeker. Like, I, if something is wrong, it should be made right. And especially if I'm the person who's been wronged, of course. So I, I guess in that sense, I do seek out drama. But I call it, I think of it more as justice than drama. Of all the people that I know, when I think of someone who seeks out drama, like, you're not first on the list if that makes you really? feel Really? Like, yeah. I, I feel like people are always calling me dramatic. I think you know who's first on the list. Olivia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Olivia is a drama queen. Olivia like, is the drama. Olivia is a storyteller and it's kind of one of her greatest qualities because she'll tell you something that happened and like it sounds crazy and exciting and and it actually wasn't like that but she's really like very um eloquent in her storytelling abilities and she makes it all sound so exciting no and like if the same thing had happened to me I might not have even noticed it oh yeah 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 yeah. she's perceptive that Olivia she's so funny but she's so the drama 25 packs of gum <laughs> 25 packs of gum is like an OG family inside joke like seriously since we were six and it was like a huge fight between Olivia and Jackie like we were on vacation in Florida please tell the story I know we've said it on this show before but just and I can never remember it. it it's illustrative so it's illustrative of Olivia's flair for the dramatics we were like young tweens and we were going for a walk I think it was probably just the three of us maybe Margo was there but it's not germane to the story so we went to Walgreens as one does and like Claudia and I wanted to buy a pack of gum because like we're kids and we're crazy. Yeah. And maybe maybe I'll give Olivia a benefit of the doubt. Maybe we wanted to buy two. One for each of yeah, us. Yeah, one for each of us. Maybe that Margo does sound like something we wanted to do. to buy three. One for yeah. each of us. And like when we used to go on excursions like without our parents, like Olivia, the way our family was like the dynamic, Olivia was automatically in charge. Like Olivia has yeah. always been the boss of us since we were kids. And like that was a rule we really respected. So like she was given the money. She was given the directions. Like we were in servitude of Olivia Ashray. And somehow. Oh, and when we got back, like Olivia, like the report would we, always come in. Like how did everybody behave? Yeah. It was always Olivia's responsibility to report back. So give the change. For some reason we started fighting in Walgreens. I don't know why. <laughs> but when we got home and Olivia relayed to our parents like what went down she said that Claudia and I wanted to buy 25 packs of gum and here we are like feeling so slandered like 
<laughs> it, like, it's just so crazy when somebody says something and it's like not what happened, you know? And it was just the first, and the way Jackie in particular, because I would have like forgotten about it. Jackie never forgot this moment because it was just like really emblematic, if you will, of like Olivia's real like ten t- tendency to, to add to color, jazz it up, jazz it up, to add color and to add packs of gum, twenty five packs of gum. <laughs> <laughs> That's so classic love. Yeah. So anyway, all is to say, I think you operate at a decent level of drums. And okay, like thanks. technically it was Shannon's drama. I think the issue more so is like you making it about you. Yeah. But Shannon was like really chill about it. Like, she was like, I'll get in the car, see if I can find another flight. Like, if that's me, I'm sweating. Yeah, but also there are, like, a number of flights from New York to Nashville. Yeah, so but it was, like, 8 o'clock. It, it was late in the night. Like, it Maybe was, she wanted to sleep over by your house. I said, by the way, I'll make the be- guest bedroom up. Like, let me know yeah, if you like, don't make her it. her options were good no matter how you slice it. I'd be it's chill, true. too. It's so true. You can't get bent out of shape about that stuff. Yeah, I guess that's like really what you learn the older you get, like not to get so bent out of shape over things. Like that's actually something you have taught me that I'm really trying to implement into my life because to me, like every mountain is a molehill. Like um, everything is the biggest, worst, most horrible thing that's ever happened to me. And just sort of like letting things roll off your back is such a hard but good quality to have. And I'm really trying to to become that person. Well, that's good, turtle. Like, you literally don't give a fuck about that, like most things, except like when Jackie freaks, like you know it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like long fuse when yeah. it reaches its end seriously it's, it's run over. for cover <laughs> it's over for you bitches yeah but it's a very long fuse very very long very very long we, also have a, we have a great show today we, we do. have stories tell me a little bit about them what are they like they're a little random not the greatest elk but like seriously who's really doing anything today other than like voting like really who's gonna post an announcement make something about them like it's election day so So i just feel like that's inevitable question mark terrible but inevitable it's terrible but inevitable like of course last year last election presidential erica jordy did file for divorce and like that was so we had and by the way we were grateful to her for giving us something to talk about besides the election yeah that was a gift but i also um yeah so now we have like some things that happened yesterday like a little something but nothing major and that's to be expected because the major news is the election get out and vote if you haven't already i'm wearing an election sweater oh my god i'm so jealous i didn't think of like dressing for something swirly or even wearing my sticker or even wearing your sticker. I have Fuck. this American flag sweater from Tucker Nuck and I was so gonna wear cute. it the other day and I was like, no, I should save it for election day. Yeah, how do you feel as a redhead about wearing the color red? Cause actually- Not my for, favorite. Right, for your birthday gift, I almost bought something like that was kind of like would clash with your coloring. No, 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 actually so much so, I don't own anything red, this was gifted to me from Tucker Nuck and they had a blue one too that they sent you and like I would have chosen blue, but I'm not complaining and I actually, I think it's like fun to change it up. But I was at Wonder Woman for Halloween two nights and one of my costumes only came with a skirt, not a shirt. You just have to wear a red shirt. And I did not have just a red t-shirt. I wound up having to like, you know that Moschino McDonald's t-shirt that I used to wear all the time? Like if you're an OG fan here, like you know the shirt. I wore Mm -hmm. it to death. I turned it inside out and I wore that because I literally don't own a red anything. That's so funny. There are like no colors I avoid. I obviously gravitate more towards like black, but I don't like stay away from any colors. So many things you have to think about when you're a redhead. It's true. I'm sure if you think hard about it, you there are colors you avoid. Yeah, like I wouldn't wear, you know, vomit green, but that's just because like it's ugly. Like if there's a shirt like or a blouse or a dress that like makes like that looks amazing on me, like I don't care what color it is, you know? Oh, I'm really big on colors. Like I can love and something. Sense. And also I when I love something, I get it in every color, but like if it's not my colors, oh no. And this, you know, inevitably, inevitably will lead us to the conversation about getting our colors done, which we haven't done, but we should. Yeah, no, I've moved on from it. it oh, she's over like it. It just felt like really necessary at one point because everybody was like doing side by sides for us and being like, she looks like shit today in this shade Deep of green. Deep winter, yeah. <laughs> she should be wearing this shade of green. And now people aren't doing that anymore. So like, it's not top of mind for me. Well, I actually intentionally wore white today. Um, because to symbolize the white stripes on the flag? No. I wanted to stay away from any colors so as not to, you know, c- c- make anybody think I was making an endorsement in a subliminal way. No, actually, I, this clip of me talking on the podcast went viral on TikTok. Somebody else posted it. And I, like, 
Obviously, the point of the video is not like my looks, but I happened to look like really beautiful. And I was like, I wonder what I did differently that day. My face like looks so like light and bright and I was wearing white. So I was like, maybe I'll try to replicate that. Somebody just like took a video of their computer where I was, I guess a couple of days ago or maybe like last week, I was saying something. Probably and I was like, four oh. months ago. No, no. I know it was somewhat recently. What were you saying? I'll tell you when it was. No, because I know I, I was looking at the outfit. I was wearing jeans and... I just decided to wear jeans last week and like really regretted it because it was hurting my vagina while I sat here. Um, what, I was like, "What are you saying?" I said, "I was in the middle of a sentence and then I said, oh, wait, I was about to make a joke that was literally going to land me in jail.'" And the kids loved it on TikTok and it's like half a million views. Yeah. It was the day after the cyber truck. Okay, so yeah, last week was mm-hmm. I wrong? No, you were right. That's like that's the whole clip. Yeah, like it was just a cute moment of people like finally appreciating my sense of humor on TikTok. Like, I thank love God. that. Oh, I also forgot to tell you, we went super viral on TikTok. Like, and we we are being accused of being a rage bait podcast. Do you know Explain- what that is? No, but I'm sad. Tell me everything. Rage bait is like when you clearly say something like factually inaccurate or stupid, like just to bait people with rage. And it was our clip about Lizzo's Halloween costume because we didn't discuss in the clip that like her costume was like a reference to a South oh, Park okay. joke that was made about her. We don't watch South Park. Like I actually don't care. Um, and so the comments like people are like, seriously, someone's going to come stab us. Like they're so mad. So it has like a million views and all these comments just rage bait, rage bait. They're mad. And it wasn't our clip that went viral because we did clip that. From our account, yeah. That's so funny. I just want to say, like, maybe she did do it because of South Park, but I think she might have dressed up as that even without South Park because it's just like Ozempic and it's pretty obvious. Everyone gets made fun of on South Park. They don't make it into a Halloween costume. Maybe she said somewhere. She probably said somewhere. If everyone's yelling about it, she probably said somewhere, I'm doing this because of South Park. But, like, the story works even without South Park. Sorry. The more I think about it, the more I can't believe that you like wore that sweater and didn't tell me to wear mine. Like I didn't realize we had the same exact sweater. Like you it would have been think so that would cute be, like, and swirly. Dopey? Oh my god, what's more American than matching American flag sweaters? Like I can't. I'm so mad at myself for I'm not even sorry. thinking of it. I'm sorry. How cute would we have been? We would have been so cute and so American. Oh, sorry, we forgot to open the show. <clears throat> god bless. America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night. No, through the light from light, the n- with, through the night with the light from, light from above. above. From the mountains do, 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 do. to the prairies do, 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 do. to the oceans, do, 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 do. white with foam. God bless. America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. I fucking love that song. Me too. All of the American anthems really slay the house down boots. I, I have a fun game for us to play. Okay. Oh my it's God. Fu- you have a game? It's a fusion of like toast games x election day okay so we're gonna predict the election outcome right now okay by playing our heart game so (laughs) okay right now we're gonna make a heart if we can make a heart that means that kamala will win but then we'll do it again for trump okay 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 okay. and then it's a tie if we both get it and by the way what if we don't get it for either of them well then we didn't predict the election okay and don't forget, we did predict the Super Bowl that one year. So, okay, ready? Three. Like, just place your hand and in three, two, two, one. This will tell you if Kamala will win. <laughs> it feels okay. like I, I, I feel Honestly, I kind of slayed that one. I, it felt really right. Okay. Now we'll see if Trump will win. And if they both get it, then there could be like a, a tie. There could and be. And then we will anyway. find out for weeks. But there could be a tie anyway. Like, that could happen. Okay, ready? Could it? Yeah, Electoral College, if the numbers shake out that way. I feel like there's no way that they could. No, Nate Silver. Like, you're talking the the Electoral College and think that through? There's processes for if there's a tie, but it could happen. It's so Selena Meyer, by the way. It's so Selena Meyer. Okay, ready? For Trump. Three, two, one. I do think the outcome will be different because you're doing something different right now. Am I? You seem like first. Anyways, like so, either one of them or they're both probably wrong. We've never done it. I would bet that they're both wrong. So there you have it. Not to spoil the evening for you. Should we? Should we also flip a coin? <laughs> Heads for Kamala, tails for Trump. 
<laughs> I don't have a coin in here. Me neither. Who the fuck has a coin these days? Actually, I have a, like a car, a, a coin jar in my home because like I never know what to do with like random coins I find in like Ben's pants. So I started a jar. I think there's like six dollars in there now. Nice. Yeah. Also, like I find random bills in my house, like euros and shit from like the three times I've ever traveled. She travels, to- yeah. Yeah. International. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with it, so it's in that jar too. It's kind of like a, a weird jar. You could take it all to the bank one day and like they can get it. Yeah, I could. I definitely could. So Zach just texted me he's going to the market. You know what? Ground chicken. I was going to make a beef chili, but I didn't want to. Yeah, I'm doing ground chicken chili today. One, it's what I had, but it was what I was looking for. Like it was my number one ground choice. Ground chicken I'm so- is the best. Because Ben saw our Instagram post yesterday. He said, oh, we're making chili tomorrow. I said, yeah, we are. And he was like, he had to like kind of sit me down. I didn't think he thought I was going to be adversarial. And he was like, we have to talk to Jackie. Like enough with this like meat alternative turkey. Ben hates By the way, turkey. I'm so off of turkey. And you me know too. what it's from? Remember that night that we cook turkey lettuce wraps uh, at Lettuce wraps. House? Jackie, that ruined ground turkey for me. Can me we talk too. about how disgusting those were? It was were? in the spring when Claudia was here. She, she makes these lettuce wraps with Ben. So we made it. I only had turkey. So we did ground turkey. And it was like so yucky. And like, it was so yucky. It was like so turkey. Like, <laughs> By the way, we might as well have seriously been eating a live turkey. Like that's how turkey it tasted. I'm so glad that you, I, cause like we all were eating it. We're like, oh, it's good. Like we didn't want to like acknowledge that this thing we all collectively spent all day on was fucking disgusting. But when we went upstairs, Ben was like, that was fucking disgusting. I'm like, listen, you can't like be rude. Somebody is cooking for us. It was like, the, the thing is, house. it was the turkey of it all. It was the turkey. It was the turkey of it all. And before that, I used to make turkey ground turkey all the time it's weirdly like always they always have kosher ground turkey at my grocery store so it's really accessible for me like whenever I would make meatballs I'd make them with the ground turkey and I had a couple of like bad turkey incidents in the last few months Mm -hmm. and I actually made ground turkey last night because I had it in my fridge because it's accessible at the grocery store and I was gonna put in my chili for tonight and I was like I don't fucking want chili so I made this Weight Watchers turkey skillet so when I was on Weight Watchers, they really push ground turkey because it's zero <laughs> points. And like, I'm such a p- big portion eater. Like when I was like, I was abusing the Weight Watchers system by seriously having like 65 turkey meatballs, but they're actually not good. That's why it's, it's free just points. It's like so turkey. <laughs> like, it's so turkey. And it's like, you understand now, because at first when I was first introduced to it, like I must've been eating something that was made really well. Cause I was like, wow, if I could just swap out everything I eat for ground turkey, like all my tacos and my chili, like I'll be thin. Oh my God. It's not that simple. It's disgusting. Yeah, so last night I had a taco salad with turkey and it was fine, but like, I don't want a turkey chili. I have, I took out two packs of ground beef and they're defrosted. I was going to do a beef chili. I don't love a beef chili. It's just like a little fatty. Oh, it's just a little beef for me is a little heavy. Like I'm at this age of this kind of era in my life, and ground meat is my favorite thing to have for oh dinner. Oh my gosh! Like I, it's I like need meatballs, to get a meat tacos. Yeah, we got one. <laughs> I'm the attachment to the KitchenAid. Like ground meat is my favorite, you know, meat of choice. And I'm really the, like the last year, ground chicken is so underrated. Ground chicken is the best of the ground. So Zach is gonna get me ground chicken, and now we're having chicken chili. And if you are following my ch- chili recipe, if it's not too late swap out the ground turkey like it's so turkey it's so turkey also taylor strecker makes her chicken chili with rotisserie chicken so it's like pre-cooked and it like oh, that's so another much time. thing and she shreds it up and it's actually really good and hers is a weight watchers <laughs> it's a weight watchers recipe um and you know chicken breast like white meat on a rotisserie is zero points too and it's so good by the way i'd like to challenge you if you're cooking chili today like why not follow my recipe i am oh you are yeah, of course, except Ben was like, you can't make it with turkey. I yeah, said yeah. I would never. Oh, okay. But you've never like followed my chili recipe, so I'm excited. Yeah, I don't like really follow recipes in general. That's so the don't problem. be offended that I no, that no. I like avoided yours. But like that way we can ensure success. Yeah. And cook it in the crusade and then move it to the crock. That way you don't have No, to- I'm just leaving it in the crusade. Okay, but remember to stir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Jobs. using your crock pot you got me. I got Jackie such a nice gift, like a sickening crock pot. From Laura Ashley. It kind of, it's Laura Ashley for Dolce & Gabbana. It literally looks like Dolce & Gabbana. It's, it's sick. It's soap. I, I like, if you, even if you had got me like a Dolce & Gabbana, like Sicily printed crock pot, like this one's more beautiful. It's really gorgeous, except for the Laura Ashley logo, but we'll just, we'll scuff it out. I don't know, Laura Ashley. I actually, I posted my wallpaper yesterday and to rave reviews, everyone's really liking it. But some people were like, this is so Laura Ashley. I'm like, I don't know her, but she sounds fabulous. There's nothing wrong with her or her company. Her logo is huge. Like it literally takes up like too much of the crock pot. But like, I don't know Laura Ashley. Do you know I, her? 
in a personal sense, no. no. Like, what's your association with her? Okay, my association with her is like lots of commercials in Florida. I feel like when we used to like sit Maybe on those we should like be big, friends and those big lazy boy recliners at Grammy and Pop's house, like, and she was always watching the Food Network. I feel like I would see like a million Laura Ashley commercials. And what was Laura selling? Oh, it's very like Martha. It's like really pretty, but reasonably priced homewares. Interesting. And when I think of Laura Ashley, like, does she have stores on the highway, like next to rooms to go? It definitely gives that sort of energy, although I don't know if she's in the brick and mortar space. Because if she has a big store on the highway, like, I gotta go. Yeah, let me, this is Laura Ashley's store locator. <clears throat> oh, by the way, Laura Ashley's crushing it selling on Wayfair, Macy's, Laura Ashley, USA. Yeah, they have stores. Oh, but they sell, like, in a lot of other stores, like Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, let me see if she has a store near me. I think I gotta go support my girl. Yes, they have stores. And they have a website. Oh. Yeah, it's also, I feel like, one of the, the early 2000s brands that I didn't know was still around. Okay, so it's Ashley store. Oh, Ashley Home Furniture? Is that she rebranded? No, no, no. So or is that different? I, I don't know if it's different, but that's why I think she has stores on the highway because I'm thinking of Got Ashley. It. But is Ashley Laura Ashley? Sound off in the comments. I'm not rage baiting. We're not rage baiting. We're just genuinely asking questions. Do you find that you maybe rage bait sometimes? No. Like, I avoid any sort of negative backlash. So like, like, like the plague. Like, I try and sit here every day and just be so likable and amenable and wonderful. I would never. Yeah. I think people, people definitely think that I do. And even when I say that I don't, they, like, wouldn't believe me. I say what's on my heart, you know? I say my She's truth. She's such a truth teller. I don't say anything, like, for the clicks. I wish I did. Yeah, I wish you did, too. Yeah, I don't, like, say a hot take, like, just to say it. No, just my to God. Have something new to say. Like you guys trust it's and hard believe. To like say you, a hot take. Like you she get, really feels this way. You could get burnt. Of course, Who would you want can. It? Ah, I'd stick with the lukewarm takes if that's what's on my heart, but it's not. A thousand percent, it's, it's not. Um, I've just looked at the time. I do feel like we like kind of have a little bit of a job to do. I've been looking at the time as well, and I know we have a job to do. And feel free to do the ads. I'm not in any rush to like get to these stories. Well, the lack of rush is brought to you by First Aid Beauty. There are certain things in life that we should not settle for, and skincare should be no different. Don't let your daily moisturizer get away with the bare minimum. Do what we did and get First Aid Beauty's Ultra Repair Cream. This moisturizer really works. It'll have you throwing your old one right in the trash. First Aid Beauty is such a fabulous brand that Jackie and I have used for a while. I have to admit, like Jackie did put me onto it. She, I feel like she's been using it for a really long time. And their Ultra Repair Cream is one of their best-selling products. It's really the daily upgrade that your skin deserves. It's going to hydrate the skin's surface two times faster. It's powered by barrier building colloidal oatmeal. It transforms your skin from dry and damaged, crusty, musty, and dusty to visibly strong and healthy in just seven days. The texture of the moisturizer is like a luxurious whipped texture, which feels really good. Um, and it does not have a greasy afterfeel, which I think is really important and why it makes it such a great moisturizer to do under makeup. So if you ever feel like your makeup is like not staying on your face or it looks like crusty, it's probably because you're not doing the proper skincare before starting your makeup. And First Aid Beauty's moisturizer is the perfect one. It will not clog your pores. It's not greasy it'll really like sink into your skin let it sit for like a couple of minutes and then do your whole makeup routine and like you will see such a big difference in how your makeup lays on your face so the dry skin cycle ends here. Demand more from your moisturizer and order First Aid Beauty's Ultra Repair Cream today. We're excited to share our offer with you guys, which is just available for our listeners. Get 20% off when you visit firstaidbeauty.com slash toast and use our promo code toast. So that's firstaidbeauty.com slash toast. Don't wait. Get 20% off with promo code toast at firstaidbeauty.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Saks.com the premier digital platform for luxury fashion. So the holidays are right around the corner and Saks.com is here and they're making it super easy to find the perfect gifts for everyone on your list. Even those pickiest little squirrels who you have literally no idea what to get for them. So whether you're shopping for a really hard to please family member, someone that seems to have everything, or even someone who's really stylish and perhaps you feel like really intimidated and you don't want to buy something for them because they're going to think it's ugly. Saks.com is you covered because you really cannot mess up when you buy from Saks.com. They have the most versatile selection of fashion, beauty, home decor, and so much more. Gift giving is not everyone's love language. It can be stressful and daunting, especially around the holiday seasons. Like shopping in person is so overwhelming and like seriously, everything's out of stock. Like it's always dramatic. But with Saks.com and their holiday gift guide, you'll be able to find the perfect gifts for him, for her. They have beauty gifts, gifts for kids. We all need a little inspiration when it comes to holiday shopping and Saks.com provides you with just that. They also can help you find your own holiday looks, whether you want to buy a gift for yourself, if you have like a lot of corporate parties, holiday parties, trips perhaps to the like Cape. Very, right, of course. 
clam bakes, things of that nature, and you want to look fabulous, they have the best clothes, the best everything at Saks.com. You can upgrade your party looks. Treat yourself to top designer brands like Alice and Olivia, Frame, Prada, Gucci, and more. After all, holiday shopping is never complete without spoiling yourself first. So if you're looking for gifts that will help with the holidays, then head to Saks.com now for a seamless shopping experience. Get ready to be the best gift giver ever and find gifts guaranteed to bring joy for every hard to shop for person this season. Let's make this holiday season memorable for you and your loved ones. Today's episode is also brought to you by Armora. I feel like Armora is like the name on everybody's lips these days. It Everybody's is. taking Armour Colostrum. So if you're looking for ways to strengthen your immunity, your gut health, improve your fitness, metabolism, enhance your skin, hair radiance, we recently discovered an incredible product called Armour Colostrum. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. I feel like everybody's talking about it. There's so many great benefits to adding it to your daily routine. It can strengthen your immunity, fortify your gut health, ignite your metabolism, revitalize hair growth, enhance your skin radiance. Um, and if you're a person who works out a lot and you're always looking for ways to like fuel your recovery and just making sure like your downtime stays as little as possible. Armor Colostrum has been really good for fuel, um, to fuel performance and your recovery. So harness the closely guarded secret of elite athletes long prized for its unrivaled ability to take performance to its apex. Colostrum has been shown in research to help enhance nutrient absorption, promote lean muscle building, and improve the endurance while fueling cellular repair, regeneration for faster recovery. So if you are like a mom, you obviously know Colostrum. I feel like I say it wrong. It's it's Colostrum, but I say Colostrum. Um, is like the most important nutrient dense thing you give your babies the second that they're born and Armra is bovine colostrum and there are so many different benefits we've worked out a special offer for our audience if you want to receive 15 percent off your first order go to tryarmra.com slash toast and enter code toast to get 15 percent off your first order that's t-r-y-a-r-m-r-a.com slash toast slash t-o-a-s-t thank you slash turd what can I say except yada welcome our first story. Oh, by the way, we don't have to. If we That's must. I got the ad break in, so like we're good. If okay. you want to chit chat about anything else. So much pressure. Is this about Jason Kelsey apologizing? I felt sick watching it. No, literally it's about Jason Kelsey apologizing and you how you felt sick watching it. Okay, so let's talk about it. Jason Kelsey expresses remorse over a heated moment he slammed students' phone to the ground. So as predicted, Jason Kelsey issued an apology about the slur that he used in response to the slur that was used in the phone slamming. And the apology was not the tone that I expected. So he is expressing remorse for the incident. He said, quote, listen, I'm not happy with anything that took place. I'm not proud of it. In a heated moment, I chose to greet hate with hate, and I just don't think that's a productive thing. I really don't. I don't think that it leads to discourse and is the right way to go about things. He said he fell down to a level that he shouldn't have. The bottom line is I try to live my life by the golden rule. That's what I've always been taught. I try to treat people with common decency and respect, and I'm going to keep doing that moving forward. Even though I fell short this week, I'm going to do that moving forward and continue to do that. Like, if I thought Jason Kelsey had actually done something wrong, this is actually an amazing apology. Like, I felt like he really, like, the remorse came through. It wasn't cookie cutter at all. I'm listening no, and learning and, and doing better. and he definitely didn't have a script. He probably nope. intentionally asked for no script and just wanted it to come from the heart. So he actually, I, I read it pretty quickly, but he says it very slowly. He's, like, thinking of what he's to clear, say. And he's clearly emotional. Like, it, it seemed so genuine. Like, and I... I understand because the more I even thought about it how we were talking about yesterday how about like the Kelsey brothers are like weirdly these like you know athletes but they're so brand safe and they have the serial and the TV shows and I forget he also has this huge ESPN contract and that's where he made the apology so I understand why he did it I'm sure it was he was told that he asked to for a multitude of reasons I don't think he did anything wrong I don't think Jason Kelsey is a homophobe whatsoever I think he's a king um I'm glad he just addressed it. I'm glad they didn't like take him off the air for a week. Like I'm glad he was able to, it's over now. Like it is yeah. over. I really don't think there's like a long, any long lasting damage done to his career. I don't think this changes the way people see him. If he's, you know, people very favorably, people like him. Like it's just, I was watching and I'm like, there are people who do fucking terrible things and never apologize. Like I right. can't. Like it just, for him to have to debase himself like this, when we both agree, and I think a lot of people agree, like not his finest we, moment, we know but him. terrible. You know, and, and we know he's we trust our like, faves. He's so mad at himself, and it's like, yeah. forgive yourself, Jason. You know, I just feel like the, the apology was like so big, and the yeah. crime was not was not the biggest. No, and what's the lesson here, right? I think of course what's the he lesson. Said what is the takeaway? Don't mess with Jason when he's on a breakaway. Like the lesson I think for him is like you know don't greet hate with hate. For me, the lesson is he needs to start acting like a real celebrity and like start 
taking advantage of like underground tunnels and security guards. Like I, every time I see him, he's like walking with regular people in big crowds at sporting events, like sitting in the stands. Stop it. You're literally so famous. I know, but that's really why people love him that he goes to the tailgates and he does the keg stands. Like if he starts acting and getting like secret like service, diva. like then he doesn't have that Jason Kelsey factor. And I think people will still love him, but like it takes away from that's like his. But trade. somebody's got to give. I know. I don't know. And he was uh, emceeing or whatever Travis's game because Monday Night Football was last night. Travis right. and his team and that played the Buccaneers. Leads into our next story. They are still undefeated. The Buccaneers or the Travises? The Travises. Well, that does lead to our next story because Taylor was at the game. Taylor is having a big week. Uh, she is completed her Eras US leg. Yes. And she has one more show. One more one city. More, one more weekend of eras in Vancouver. Do you know mm -hmm. that Snitch is trying to go to that? It's in Toronto, which makes makes Snitch going a lot less crazy because it's a 45 minute flight totally. and Vancouver's like a six hour flight. Totally, totally. Um, totally, Rage totally, bait. totally. Rage bait. Rage bait. Jackie doesn't respect Canada. <laughs> um, I didn't know that, but it makes sense. I think a lot of people like last ditch effort, especially from the Northeast. Like it's really easy to get to Toronto from lots of parts. I like, guess it would be like going to Boston. I think I'll go to Boston. It's seriously like going to Boston. And we know passport. that Margot would just go to Boston on a dime. A thousand percent. Is it this weekend? No, Margot's here. Margot's coming here today. Did you guys know that? Oh, right, 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 right. She's coming to see her sister. She's coming to see me. I'm so excited. So I also, That's the huge. chili needs to be great because like, it's the first thing she's going to taste when she arrives. It's so true. Um, so I think it's next weekend. And then she was also, I got all this from the redhead. She, we recorded yesterday. So now I know everything that's going on with her. She's also trying to go to Vegas for Adele's last show. Okay. Did you know that about her? I didn't, but I know she's seen the Eras tour a couple of times. And I would recommend if she's going to like make a last ditch ever, she should go to Vegas. Like to see Adele, like it is... And she's in so her spectacular. Adele era. She's really been appreciating Adele. Now, I tried to say on the episode, like, I don't think you need to go to Toronto for eras, but I also didn't want to start. Enable, yeah. I didn't want to go there. Like, I didn't want to bring this. She didn't want to rage bait that community. On the Redheads, like, seriously, the most non-controversial podcast of all time. Actually, I, I don't know that to be true. I feel like the Redheads are always, like, making crazy controversies. I'm always reading about it. I know. Well, if you listen to the Redheads, you know we get a little crazy. But on our face, like, we're just reading. The Redheads. The Redheads. You guys should check out the Redheads. Claudia, you have to read the book that we read. It's I know. I'm going to wait ones. and choose it for my own book club. It was so fantastic. We had a really good time on the episode. It drops Thursday. But anyways, all to say, Taylor's Eras U.S. done. One more weekend of Eras. Like, what are we thinking, fam? What are, what are we thinking? Here's what I'm thinking. Like, and I'm at this point, I have no proof. And I actually don't think that this is what's going to happen. But like, I actually need it to. I need these two to get married. Like, it's, you know, she's in the suite with Andrea and Mama Kels. Like, these people, Jason's over here putting his entire career on the line defending her. Like, they're a family. And what do families do? They get married. They're a family like a I'm, growing tree. No, obviously I'm very toxic. Like, and I'm more traditional. So I'm like, they need to get married and have babies. Like, whatever. And maybe that's not Taylor's journey. And I apologize for putting, like, my expectations on her. But that's what I would like to see happen. Like, she did this amazing thing. She's the most successful person in the world. Like, yeah, she could keep, like, hustling. Very, like, Kim Kardashian. I want to do this and that and that. Or you could just like bloom where you're planted. You have this amazing boyfriend who's so successful in his own right. Things seem to be going so well. Your families blend so well together. You just came off this huge feat. You have the admiration, love, and respect of everyone on the globe. Like, invest in yourself. Take time. Have a be if that's what you want. If that's what you want, obviously. But I do feel like that's what she wants. She's still like traditional, hopeless. I mean, romantic. every song like, she's ever written is about love and romance and a right, traditional like, go love story. So to get think married. that like that's not what she wants. Like everything she's ever said is pointed us towards like. Yes, yeah, so I'm just love, assuming here, and, marriage, I, and I apologize. In the baby carriage. So I, I'm making assumptions for sure based on like just information, but, but that's what we I do. I think here. that's what she wants, and I would just love to see her like slow down a little bit and like invest in her personal life and just like be with Travis and get married and hang out with her family. Like being on tour, especially a tour of this size and like you know range. Like she was in China, uh, Shanghai, or no, she wasn't in Shanghai. She was in like Singapore. Like she went everywhere. Like the far Australia, the farthest steps. Just like lay. Go to Travis's games, live in Kansas City, hang out with Britt. Like, I'm all about, like, slowing down. I agree. I do think that perhaps the surrogate is due in January. 
Oh, Jackie is convinced that like they already have a baby on and, the way. Yeah, because when I saw it, Eras, like when she said, I'm having his baby. No, I'm not. Archer. So the no, I'm not means like the surrogate's having it. Oh, okay. The okay. Archer means that it's Travis's, of course. And of course. I'm having his baby because like she will have his baby, but she's not having his baby. And I, the only real like proof, not proof or like support for this theory that I have, and it's just not a theory, it's more of like my hopes and wishes, is that like she very well could have kept doing this tour. Yeah. Why did she have to end it? Like she is, this is like the third leg she's announced. Do another one, like do a flip. Everybody, you could sell it and you could keep going and you could, add, but she didn't. So she yeah. obviously wanted to make space for like maybe, you know, it, writing new music and recording new music is a great job to have when you're settled down. You just, she has a studio in every house that she lives in. Like you don't have to be traveling and being so crazy. Like, I don't know. I but just also, think it's possible. The reason why I think it's like a surrogate because if she were to be oh. getting pregnant, then she could only like start the process in December and it takes like a while and then to be pregnant and like by the time she actually has a baby, she'll have to go back to work. Doesn't she want to be home with her baby? She could start in January when the surrogate is due. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I actually don't think that they would go the surrogate route, honestly. Travis is such like a physical person, you know? I feel like he would just knock her up, you know? Yes, but I think... I don't know if this conversation is so offensive or not. <laughs> well, here's the thing. This is what... We're listen, the, we're women. We're the ones who would be offended by it, right? Oh, it's so true. And like Taylor could... Maybe she's the only one who could be offended, but like she's doing okay, you know? Yeah, and and she's and not as far listening. as I know, she doesn't listen. So we're good. We've never and like we're ever saying heard, this out of like such. It's not like Kylie with the manicure and the trees. Like there is yeah. no murmuring that Taylor's ever heard the show. Ever. So like, if we're safe, a tree falls in the wood, but no one hears it. Is it offensive? No. No, it's it's a good point, and and I think Taylor, if she ever heard it, would know. Like we're speaking out of love and like just sheer desperation. Like I would love this journey. I just, I really want them to get married. And I don't need like pictures. You don't need a Vogue wedding. Like, I just want them to be married. Like, I want them, I love them. I don't, I think that a baby is more possible than a marriage. I think marriage is well, just really yeah. complicated legally when you're like tailored. That's successful, yes. So yes, yes, yes. I can do without that, but I would love for them to start a family. Sorry, I said yeah. it. I said it. I would, I would just love for them to settle down, whatever that means for them. Yeah. I'm having his baby. Because also Travis has said plain as day he wants a family. So mm -hmm. if she doesn't, then that would mean that they probably won't make it long term. Right, because that's like an actual deal breaker for yes. people. No matter how great a relationship is, if one wants kids and the other doesn't and neither are willing to budge. And and neither, I guess people could change their minds, but if they're like, if they're not going to budge, then they shouldn't be together and they shouldn't budge because you deserve to have the life that you want. Of course, no. And I do think when you're dating past a certain age, like you kind of address that almost immediately because right. to be in an almost two year long relationship with somebody who you have this huge disagreement on on like kind of a deal breaker um it's really it's not a relationship worth pursuing at that point so I, I think that they're probably on the same page yeah th yeah they've had this conversation because we know that he wants kids that would yeah. ergo mean if a equals b b equals c Taylor wants kids no I'm obsessed I'm having his baby and these are the com kinds of conversations we're gonna have on election day when there's not much more to talk about it's so true. We're just like avoiding landmines. We're just, we're going to guess when, when Taylor Swift is having her first baby. When is the surrogate due? What, and like, what do you think the responsibility of being Taylor Swift's surrogate is? Because I always felt that like with Kim Kardashian and she had talked a lot about the surrogacy process and she, I don't know, they never put her on the show, but like we knew so much about her and that's a, a big responsibility. Being a surrogate is like the most I big wonder, responsibility there could be. I wonder if surrogacy is legal in Missouri. Oh, right. There's a lot of litigious policies. Because if, like, I, a lot of people go to California to do it because they have, like, really yes. lax uh, policies Laws. around surrogacy. Um, but if, if... Yeah, and actually, like, up until last year, you couldn't even do it in New York. I remember Andy Cohen was always advocating for that because he had two babies via surrogates, <gasps> and I think he also went to California. Because I was going to say, wherever she's spending a lot of time would have Jackie, to be is it on the is it on the ballot this year? No, no, no. No, not uh, enough. Why'd you guess? Because if, if, if she had been going to L.A. a lot, I'd say, oh, the surrogate's in L.A. And she... Surrogacy is legal in Missouri. Got it. And that's why she's like happy to go to Missouri and they got the new house with the wing for the surrogate. <laughs> Jackie. I'm telling you, I don't think, I, I mean, there's a million reasons why someone would have a surrogate, but I don't, I don't see, I think for most people it's like, it's not your first choice, right? I'm just like saying. You're kind, of, you're kind of left with no. When I, I don't time think, is very precious, this shaves like a whole year off the process. Right, right, right. Something to think about. And I also feel like becoming a billionaire was something that was really important to Taylor. Like, you know, these milestones, 
certain things like are oddly important to her and you think like well if that was me I wouldn't care but like she cares about album of the year she cares and I think she cares about being like the first woman billionaire solely for music and she did just recently cross that threshold so it's like everything she's really ever wanted has come true and where do you go from there it's kind of like when Kylie got pregnant it was like what else was she gonna do she was a billionaire she had everything she ever wanted she was the top of the game biggest celebrity really what else do you what, what can you do after that yeah except just like settle down yeah and like settle into it that's why it was like so crazy when Kylie got pregnant but now in retrospect like it really wasn't like she was what 20 no it was so crazy but really, what else was she going to do? Like, she there was nothing to do. She was had already done everything. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Are you ready for our next story? Number three? Yeah. Another yeah. lady in love. Who? Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater have gone Instagram official a year yes. and change into their relationship. Actually, who knows how long? Because apparently all this stuff happened that we don't know about. Um, Mm -hmm. But the two of them have gone Instagram official. They attended the Wicked premiere in Sydney on Sunday and shared their first photo together on social media on Monday. She shared a cute image of herself leading Ethan down some stairs among in a carousel of other images. And he posted that picture, too. And she tagged him. Yeah. So it's so funny. And I know you don't know this. So the Jennifer Hudson show, the like talk show hosted by Jennifer Hudson. They do this very cute trend that's really been very good for the show because I feel like her talk show kind of like was in free fall. I feel like it wasn't making a lot of waves. And now on social media, they do this thing where every time a guest comes out of their green room and walks to set, all the production members, like producers, PA, they line the hallway and they do like a cute little song and dance and cheer for the person. So they're like, E, Finn Slater, E, E, like they make something up and it's really cute. Um, so, so many have gone viral. The first one I saw was like Gwen Stefani. She had no idea. She comes out of the dressing room. She's like, what the fuck? And seeing how people like get involved is like so funny. Really like it's, it humanizes a lot of celebrities and it's this really fun thing that they've been doing. And the Ethan Slater one, he went on Jennifer Hudson and he got one and the video went so viral. And like literally that was the catalyst for people now like have completely changed their tune. He's not like ugly SpongeBob. They're like, Ari, I get it. I get it. I I'd let I him s- I'd let him ram me with a 10 foot pole. Like what? it's yeah, it's so I crazy. Saw the video. How, like, I just want the tell internet you. is so fucking like wishy washy. It takes the tiniest thing to like turn them completely. But there has definitely been a shift in the Ethan Slater rhetoric. And a lot of it I'm telling you has to do with that Jennifer Hudson video. I saw the video and that was not my takeaway. No, so funny. Tana Mojo replied to it and she was like, you guys are so fucking finicky. Like at first it's like, ew, who's this ugly gap tooth bitch? And now it's like, oh, I let him ram me with a semi truck. Like it's so crazy how like fickle the internet and like the people's opinions are, you know? But I saw the video. And what did you think about it? Like I I wasn't moved. No, neither it was I. Like, it, wasn't, it was congruous with the Ethan Slater that I know. Okay, so I saw actually a video that I totally should have sent to you. So he's being interviewed on the red carpet and someone, I guess this like, I forget what publication it was. Their thing was like asking every person who came by to get interviewed to do the defying gravity, like, oh, like do your version of it. And he did. (laughs) And he was seriously so like nasally and SpongeBob. He literally sounded like SpongeBob. And I, my immediate thought was like, okay, SpongeBob is in Wicked. And he was like, oh, that was like, he said, that was a little SpongeBob. Like I put a little too much SpongeBob in it. He like referred to himself. Honestly, that made me that like him. Moves like the needle. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. He was like, ah, wah, ah. like really SpongeBob. <laughs> It was literally like somebody said, can you audition for Defying Gravity as Spongebob? Spongebob like, version. Yeah, it was so funny. That's hysterical. And we're getting a lot of like, you know, pictures and videos and photos of them interacting, walking down the stairs together. Um, they like are ushered to their seats for the actual premiere and they're holding hands and like they're surrounded by fans. So it's like officially, you know, on. Yeah, and you know what? I think the timing is really good. It's been a very long time. They're still together. They're promoting the movie. It's good for the movie that there's a romance and they're so serious and like they deserve to be out in the public and enjoying their relationship. So even though like, even though, you know? Right, right. Even though, period. Even though, though, I'm happy. Even though that. <laughs> I'm happy for her. I... I'm not so easily swayed, you know, because I'm so like stubborn. Time, it takes a lot for me to change my mind. Time heals most. And so regarding the relationship, like, I'm... It's, You're good? It's, I, I'm not good, but, like, I, I really do like Ari, and, like, I am trying to trust my fave when she's like, you yeah. guys... It's not at all what what it's, it's been made out like. to be. And so, like, I really am trying to 
I don't know what it could be, but like I'm trying to just like trust her. Yeah. And maybe it's like fool me seven times, shame on me, because like she's always got a serious man and it's always, you know, but you gotta trust your faves. I really do like her. But but I don't like him. I just wanna say, I just wanna make that really clear. I like her too. And honestly, even what I've seen from him, there's, there's not nothing like. No, he's like a nice guy. He's Claudia, like a little he's not nerdy. a nice guy. But Claudia, yeah, the other, the, the other thing. The letter? The letter? That he wrote to his Jewish to, day school. Oh my God, I totally forgot about this guy. He's a fucking spineless loser. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like a self-hating Jew. Yeah, oh man, I totally forgot. He's horrible. Uh, back, I hate again, sorry. Thank you for reminding me. It's so hard to keep up. Like part of this job when like, and I'm sure like I you guys had, have by noticed. By the way, like, I had to be reminded too recently. I had forgotten. A really part of this job, especially in the last year, I'm sure you guys have noticed, is like really a lot of the times like separating the art from the artist. Like there are some people like I actually will just like forget that they've like done or said things about Israel or Jews. Cause like I can't, if I think about it too much, like I'll have to quit this job for right, real. Right. When you care as much as we do about celebrities, but more about like our Jewish identity and supporting the state of Israel, like it's actually really fucking hard. So some things I so push out of my mind, Ethan Slater was out of my mind cause he's so irrelevant. Honestly, not that I pushed it out of my mind, but there are certain, like some of my faves who I just like, I look past. Yeah, yeah, because you want to get the job done. But it's yeah. like, yeah, separate the art from the artist. But when I don't consume your art, then I don't, then you're all the same to me. So like Ethan Slater, I didn't see SpongeBob Live. I, I'm not like a fan of yours. And that, oh. by the way, and you, you're, you're so wrong for that. So like, all I know is the letter and the yeah. baby. The SpongeBob ladders. <laughs> <laughs> the ladders. He wrote like along with like two other freaks like this. He penned a letter to like an open letter to like the Jewish day school that like raised him and just was like clowning on them for like supporting Israel. It was really like the worst thing ever. And it was like, leave your school alone. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't touch the, the SpongeBob, SpongeBob ladders. ladders. <laughs> Are you ready for our next story? No, are you? No. Is it our next story that's brought to you by Skims Perchance? Perchance it is. Holidays are here. Shopping for everyone on your list can definitely be overwhelming. And Skims launched their holiday shop will seriously knock off half the people on your list. So you can finally get into the spirits. It's really the best destination for all your gift giving. There's even a few pieces myself that I've been eyeing. So everyone in the family is getting Skims. I just got... um, their holiday collection. It's like a very Christmassy red type of pajama. Everything Skims makes from like loungewear pajamas for the comfy cozy sets. I love and I love that they've set up a holiday shop because really it's such an underrated place to shop for gifts, especially if you like, it's like a classic joke. Like, what are you getting for your mom? A robe? But there's so many people in your life like who comfy cozy is their culture. And Skims is really just like the perfect place to shop. Also, like for somebody who you know a little bit more intimately, like getting them something nice like bralettes, bras, undies from Skims. Like it's so high quality. It's like such a good gift because it's so functional. The fits everybody scoop bralette. Am I wearing that today? No. Um, I took it off right before I came to work. It's my favorite bralette ever. I call it my indoor bra. It's like really supportive for like walking around the house. I can't like be walking around the house without a bra. The Skims Holiday Shop has them packaged in really cute boxes that make it really easy for stocking stuffers. The festive prints have got us in the holiday spirit. I love that they take care of like the wrapping too. Like you could wrap it obviously, but the wrapping itself is so cute. Putting it in a stock or under the tree like it's really such like a low lift gift with no hassle so shop the skims holiday shop at skims.com available in styles for women men kids and even pets also they're super size inclusive so you'll be able to find what you need if you haven't yet be sure to let them know that we sent you after you place your order select podcast in the survey and select our show from the drop down menu that follows today's episode is also brought to you by Rakuten the best way to save lots of money this holiday season because you can stack holiday sales and deals on top of cash back to maximize your savings at over 3,500 stores so Rakuten is like the best thing to have. The app is amazing and being a member is a no brainer, but especially during the holiday season, like you're spending so much money, having that money work back and like help you out is so underrated. So stores will be at the highest cash back rates of the year during the holiday season, all the way up to 15% cash back and some of your favorite brands through the holiday seasons. So here's how it works. Your favorite stores, like seriously, anything you could think of. I have used Rakuten. I am on electronics, on makeup, on clothes, food, literally anything. Um, You'll pay, a lot of those favorite stores will pay Rakuten to send them shoppers. And then Rakuten will pass on part of that money back to their members via PayPal or via check. So you're getting cash back at hundreds of stores across every single category, including fashion, beauty, electronics, home essentials. They partner with, you know, Macy's, Walmart, Bloomingdale's, Urban Outfitters, YSL Beauty, Fenty Beauty, Dyson, 
Maybe you're getting a Dyson Airwrap this year. Samsung, Zappos, Wine.com, Expedia, Neiman Marcus, like really everything, UGG. So join the 17 million members who are already saving. Start all of your holiday shopping at Rakuten.com or you can simply download the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cash back really will add up and once you get that check or that PayPal drop, you'll be so happy you did it because like everybody hit, like at the end of the holiday season, like it really hits when your credit card bill comes, like how kind of wild you went. And you know, getting that little bit, that little piece of, piece of yourself back is huge. Today's episode is also brought to you by Good Ranchers. It's long been debated at Thanksgiving, is turkey better or ham? Many families have had ruined holidays over the simple question, and if you picked either, you'd be wrong. Because the third and corrupt auction is a free ham from Good Ranchers worth $110. Mm. During their Thanksgiving special, you can choose any box of their 100% American meat and wild-caught seafood and get a free 10-pound spiral-cut ham added for free. So take that, turkey. By shopping Good Ranchers, you are supporting local farms and ranches in the U.S. You can skip the chaos and imported meat at the grocery store. And most importantly, you can make time at the table with family, easy, delicious, and stress-free. So Good Ranchers is delivering high-quality, 100% American meat straight to your door so you can celebrate what matters most this Thanksgiving, time with the people you love. To claim your free Thanksgiving ham before they're gone, go to GoodRanchers.com, subscribe to any of their boxes of 100% American beef, chicken, pork, or wild-caught seafood, and use our code TOAST at checkout. Be sure to be... Uh, order by November 19th for guaranteed delivery for Thanksgiving. You'll be able to enjoy 100% American meat, a free 10 pound spiral cut ham, and you'll get connected to American farms and ranchers this November at goodranchers.com. If food you can trust matters to you, then put the keys, the car keys down, don't go to the grocery store, and instead go to goodranchers.com and use our code TOAST today. Remember to visit goodranchers.com, use our code T-O-A-S-T to claim a free Thanksgiving ham before they run out. If you're thankful for the farmers and ranchers of this country, go to goodranchers.com, support them with every order. Goodranchers.com, American meat delivered. Thank you, turdy and meat. What? Turdy and meat. Oh, as opposed to like American? Yeah. Cool. I get my meat from Turdian. I get me my meat from Good Ranchers. Our next story is today's Martha Stewart news in an effort to rebuild what Martha lost, was stolen from her. We shall mm-hmm. t- talk about Martha every day until the job is done. I, so she's a billionaire again. <laughs> I love that. So Bethany Frankel actually took to her TikTok to do a little Martha Stewart story time. Did you see? I did see, but I didn't watch the whole thing because I felt like it was going to be like a Martha hate train and I wasn't in the mood. So it was like a bit of both, but ultimately it sounds like like respect, but also okay. just sharing like anecdotes from her time with Martha over the years. It was an eight part series, which like seems like a oh, lot. Oh, that's a lot. Right? Okay. That just seems like a lot to me. No, I can tell you, especially ever since TikTok um, released the ability for you can do videos up to 10 minutes long, there has never been any sort of need for a part two, let alone a part eight. Well, maybe a part two, maybe, but eight parts, like, come on. Anyways. And maybe that's why I'm not a successful TikToker, because my philosophy is like, I refuse to do, go to part two, like, fuck off, put it all in one video, like, I hate that shit. Yeah, she recalled the few interactions that she had with Martha over the years. Um, and actually, she's an interesting person to, like, hear her point of view, because I feel like for a few years, she was probably, like, a, a Martha in training. Like, she was that was, like Martha was st- probably, like, her inspo. Yeah, for sure. So, Bethany Frankel had competed on Martha Stewart's show in 2005 that was called The Apprentice, The Apprentice Martha Stewart. And it was, like, Martha Stewart's version of The Apprentice, which I didn't know that she had, but it makes sense, because, like, she worked with Mark Burnett. Who Mark did Burnett for her the, talk show. And also, like, that show sounds amazing. I think I have to go watch it. Yeah. Bethany was the runner-up. In wow. The past, yeah, in the past, Bethany has claimed that the two butted heads following the show, and now she's spilling the tea. During the series, the TikTok series, let's not get it twisted, <laughs> she remembered a time when Martha made an appearance on her talk show, Bethany, and called her a mm. pest. Um, screaming. She said, while Martha wasn't very nice to Bethany on the show, the host recalled it being a milestone in their relationship because it made her feel more like her peer than, than her apprentice. Right. She said, quote, it was my house, she was a guest in my home, and I still treated her with honor and respect. She's a tough bitch, and I know she's been so challenging, and she comes from old school generations. I don't give a good fuck about any of that. It's a touching story. She built a billion dollar business. She went to jail. She's been in the clink. I know from people who know her that she was never really like the persona. She's a fucking bra so don't get it twisted right and that by the way that was something they said in the documentary like they were not ashamed of like she is tough and this thing went viral on tiktok somebody went up to martha like at a red carpet and asked her like martha what is your biggest pet peeve and she said incompetence 
And it's such a good, and that you could see that even when she was like yelling at that bitch about the knife, like someone not doing something nor, like right or correctly as Martha sees it, like being her biggest pet peeve completely makes sense. And that doesn't always translate as to like the nicest person. And I like that they didn't shy away from that in the documentary. Like, yeah, I was tough. You yeah. don't become a billionaire by being soft. Right. And that also, it's like, that's the level that it takes like to operate at the level that of what she was doing, even in her own home, like to get up every yep. day and like to garden, to cook, to yep. clean. She was remodeling her home and painting the rooms. Like you have to have that sort of drive and like exacting standards. Yeah, incompetence. Bethany also told a story that before all of Bethany's ex success, she alleges that she had another petty interaction at Nobu. Um, Bethany noticed Martha sitting across the restaurant and she slid into the booth next to Martha who made a snide comment about a movie Bethany had done in which she was topless. Beth, uh, Bethany oh said, my God. Yeah, that, that thing went viral. Remember when she was on Housewives, they brought it up and then it got like, because it, it was before Bethany was ever famous. She like did a movie and there's like a sex scene in it. She, Bethany said, she can't stand me. I'm a pest to her. She said to me, oh, I just watched your movie. Swear on my life. Then, oh my, that's like such a mean thing to say. Yeah, this is what Bethany said back. She said... Oh, she said, oh, I just got an insider stock tip. <laughs> oh, that's a good rebuttal. I feel like Martha would appreciate somebody yeah. who can like Give go back and forth. She said, no exaggeration. Her words, she said, cuntiest of cuntiest interactions of all time. That is so funny. Honestly, I do commend Bethany Frankel for her ability to make everything about herself like she she will she like and it's something that I do every single day and sometimes I struggle I'm like how can I make this about myself and I couldn't really figure out a way to make the Martha Stewart documentary about myself but yeah, you did. oh actually I said dinner. I started a dinner party yeah. yes Bethany's ability to like always bring the conversation back to herself is something I really really admire honestly and this is just a perfect example of that yeah and I also feel like she has so many experiences she's been in the business for so long like okay I'll listen even though I'm not on TikTok so I'm not listening but um I, I support this. You know, if I was on her yeah. content team, I'd say post it. I'd maybe say two part series, three I don't part think series. Bethany has a content team, and I think that's why she's as successful as she is. Like, she, there's nobody else fucking around on her page. Like, it's literally just her. Yeah, remember her show? Which Bethany? Oh, the the competition, like to be her content person, literally, like. It was like The Apprentice. Oh, The Big B. Big, Big Shot with B. B. Oh my God, me and Brian Kelly were obsessed with that show. Big Shot with B or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. on HBO Max. It was like one of the first Max original shows um, back in the day. Oh my God, I totally back forgot about day, that. It was like three years ago. I'm saying when Max first launched and they like were just putting up like old episodes of Sex in the City and you could watch the new episodes of Game of Thrones. Then they started creating their own original shows. This was like the third one. It was like that dating show. It was like F-Boy Island or whatever. Yeah. And... Bethany's show oh my god she, the big shot with B whatever it was so good and so dumb I loved it yeah <laughs> good time so are good you ready times. for our fifth and final story just to sort of wrap it up yeah I am just to sort of wrap it up it's a story for me and I chose it selfishly and there are probably gonna be a couple people out there who care but not many and I'm doing am it, I okay? am I one of them you might care in service of your sister okay let's hear it <laughs> Queen Elizabeth the second rip. I don't care. Will like, be appearing in the new Paddington movie posthumously. Oh, that's sweet. That is sweet. So the late Queen Elizabeth II will briefly appear in Paddington in Peru after the beloved bear joined the monarch to promote her platinum jubilee in 2022. So everyone remembers that sketch. I feel like it meant a lot to everyone. That will always be like one of my favorite things that I think of when I think of Elizabeth. Especially you were the one who told me about the deep history of Paddington, right? That Paddington right? is a Jewish bear. Right, and he was conceived during the Holocaust, or right after the Holocaust, to like you know, those kids on the Kinder Ex Express where they were shuffling kids out of... Paddington is inspired by them. Yeah. And he's like yeah, influenced by them. That's why he wears like the name around his the neck. Train the train tag, backpack. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very... Um, Jewish coded. Jewish coded plus Queen Elizabeth. So yeah, I have a soft spot in my heart for Paddington. I'm not afraid to show it. I love that. Have you ever seen it? No, but maybe that's something I get into with my kids. Like, what, what am yeah. I doing watching Paddington? It's giving maps. You should watch Paddington. <laughs> like, mappy. you should with the boys. Very mappy. Yes, with the boys when it, when it happens, you know? Yeah. But anyway, her cameo is small. It's a photo from the pair's tea time at Buckingham Palace shown on the screen. So they're actually referencing like that. The Jubilee. That sketch um, in the new Paddington movie. And they requested from the royal family if they could do that. 
the royal family were so excited about it and of course said that's yes. That's really cute. Yeah, they were very happy for it to happen, but we don't like to make a big deal of it because Paddington's obviously a very modest fellow. No, of course, and Paddington's a star. You know, we're not infringing on Paddington's moment. We're just like, happy to be included. Paddington has like big connects and he's got big celeb friends and he's a mover and shaker, but he's a humble little guy. He's a hustler for sure. He's a hustler. So that's sweet. That was just a little sweetness to round out the week. I hope that's okay with everyone. To round out the week, it's Tuesday. <laughs> if that ain't the truth. To round out the day. Today will be a week, everyone. I just want you to know. Today will be a week. And we'll see you next week, tomorrow. Listen, here's the thing. We are all gonna we are gonna be okay. We love each other. We are so divided. Like seriously, every, oh my God, wait, I have to tell a story. I don't know if you saw this because I sent it to you, but you didn't respond. Um, there are so many videos going around. Like actually Don Lemon's new job is like making a TikTok series where he walks around asking people who they're voting for. And there's like a million kids who just like take a microphone. Like who are you voting for? Trump or Kamala, Trump or Kamala. And I saw one today and someone was wearing toast merch, the You're girly lying. shirt. And I needed, and you know what she said? <laughs> they were like Trump or Kamala. And she was like, I actually did a write-in for a third party, which is like the actual worst thing you could say. Like, you might as well not vote. Like, right. And I was actually like horrified. Who do you think she wrote it in, Turdy Lou? I actually think, just based on vibes, like I think that she just didn't want to say who she voted for because she was like kind of caught off guard. Like, you know, they just come up and like Wait, ask did you question. send it to me? Yeah. Hold on, I'm on my way. Let's watch and it. And I don't want to put this girl on the spot. Like, no, no, like I don't want to talk about it like that much, please. You text, <laughs> I feel bad. I was you just, you I DNS'd it. You DNS'd it. Wow. In our chat. Oh, okay. Ugh, well, there's so much in, in not not one to one, right? In the group chat? Not one to one, yeah. How did I miss this? Let's see. Mm, I'm not gonna find it. In well, time. I was just like so excited, and then I was like, wait, I wonder who she's voting for. What I was just like she, being nosy. That's so funny. What if she's voting for you? Then is it okay? Like, I I, I probably should say this and I should have said it. Like, please don't vote for me. Like, what only... <laughs> oh, first of all, I do not want to be president. Like, fucking thankless job. Like, and, they're always, and they're always counting how many days off you take. They're like, Biden, please. Like, bitch, leave me alone. I'm going on vacation. Like, that's none of your fucking business. One. Two, um, yeah, thankless job. Like, four years with no time off. Like, I just... I don't want it. So, Well, you get please, time off. Stop writing in my name. It. Please. I do not want it. You stop sound like writing RFK. in my name. Do not vote for me. No, do but for not. real, do, people are voting for me. Like, stop. <laughs> it's I mean, embarrassing. Who she wrote in. Hopefully she'll see this if she's a, a toaster. Was it new merch or old merch? It was the girly tea, like pretty new. Oh, she's listening. Shout out. And then like, let she us know, like, like, I guess, no, you don't have to tell us your vote. No, no, no. But I just wanted to like share like some toast election related news. That is really fun. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So that's our show. Everyone, good luck today. Like, and I, I had saw Steve Wozniacki had actually said um, it might not be like last year. Like, we actually might find out tonight, um, which would be nice, like, not to drag this out. So, like, hopefully tomorrow morning we could just, like, start fresh. Yeah. With the, I mean, with the we news. should find out tonight. Like, we found out tonight for, like, my whole life. My uh, most years. Last year, last time, I keep saying last year, like, there was more mail in ballots because of COVID, but, like, now COVID. it should be, like, and so many people voted early. Like, why, sh like, shouldn't that make haste? But I saw this thing about, like, an important county saying, we need 14 days or some shit like that. Mariposa County. Do you know Maricopa. what I'm talking about? Get it together. Why is yeah. it always Maricopa? It is always. Is that in Arizona? Georgia. Oh, well. I think so. It's annoying. Um, no, and so, it's like, like, hopefully, hopefully, it's, like, this, hopefully, it ends tonight. It ends tonight. Like that would be nice. Cause Unless, last year, or, last election, it was till Saturday. Oh no, it's Arizona turtle. Oh my God, not me literally knowing everything about this election. Not hashtag me rage baiting. Hashtag right in for turdy. Not me rage baiting. Um, Unless it's a tie. That's like the only, like, then it would not end Well, yeah, tonight. because I was watching the Today Show today and their, like, final poll results were 49% to 49%. And I never understand polls like that because what about the other 2%? Did those people not vote? No, like, they, they wrote in. Or they did a third, oh. or they did Green oh, Party. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, also, I wonder what yes. happens if there's a tie. Tie goes to the runner? Um, I think it goes to Ty Frazier. <laughs> 
Um, that's just what I think. So if you if you're not gonna write in for me, which you shouldn't, you should write in for Ty Frazier. Yeah, but don't vote for Turney, you guys. Like, no, go vote for one of the two candidates. Best of luck. We'll see you on the other side. Make a chili. Watch TV and just and also oh, what I was gonna say I think they make it really close like on the news like forty nine to forty nine so that you tune in tonight to watch because if it's like this person's just winning then blowout you know also they want it's not good for ratings they want people to go vote and if you think this person's just winning whether it's your candidate or not you might think that your vote doesn't matter because it's like so far so yeah. I think it's like good for everyone when they're like it's so close. Yeah, well, this is a good reminder. If you haven't yet, make sure to pack a snack, grab an elderly neighbor, and head out to the voting polls. In New York, you will not need an umbrella. It's actually a gorgeous day. Perhaps like a, a, a portable fan, because it's quite it's quite warm. It's supposed to be 71 degrees today. So go do that. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast on Monday Morning Show. We deal with the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere. Podcast can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, IRA, Castbox, all the places we'll be listening to podcasts. Find us at Toast Leave a five star review. Not a beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. We love you all. Happy Tuesday to all who celebrate and we'll see you tomorrow happy ultimate tuesday love ya bye